bit of Dog FCB and welcome back here to the channel guys and in today's video we are going to be talking about Antoine Griezmann but not in the way really that he has been portrayed over the past few years because in today's video we are going to be looking at Griezmann's path to Barcelona from his early days as a child breaking onto the scene trying to make it as a professional footballer his time in France then transferring to Spain with Real Sociedad or Atletico Madrid his international career and his friendships off the pitch and how that might differ from the perception that we currently have of Antoine Antoine Griezmann and his entire personality. In this video, it's the other side, the different side of the story, the Antoine Griezmann that you may not know, that you may not have seen before, the full picture, the full path will be analysed for you and you'll get to know the real Antoine Griezmann. Because for me, when we're talking about Antoine Griezmann right now in terms of the footballing sense, you're talking straight away about the documentaries, you're talking about the transfer scandals, you're talking about the Fortnite celebrations, you're not really talking about the football, and I think that's a great shame. I think that's a real, real shame, because right here, you've got a player who had to work really, really hard to make it. He really had a tough journey, he really worked hard to make it work, and here he is today, reaping those rewards. And I just feel right now, that perception is wrong. Because as a boy coming through, as a boy who had a dream to make it as a professional footballer, he endured rejection after rejection after rejection because he went around, along with his father, to so many different French clubs after time after time after time. He went there for trials, for tryouts. He stayed there for a day, he stayed there for a week, trying to make it work, trying to convince them, really, to take him on, but it never materialised. And every single time, they were saying things like, look, you're too small, it's not going to work, you're too frail, you're not quite what we need right now, you're not really the stature that we need a footballer to have. And even though some of those French clubs, they went on to say, look, we can see you've got that technical quality. You can see that you're a very, very good footballer. But at the same time, we can't take a risk on you because of your size. And that really, really hurt Griezmann. It hurt his family. They could see that desire. He didn't want to focus on school. He didn't want to do anything else. All he wanted to do was be a footballer. And he wanted to do that because clearly he had the talent. But at the same time, it was getting him somewhere, getting him into a club so he could get started, so he could get the nutrition that he needs, that he could get the training that he needs. That's what he needed as a young boy and in France he couldn't find it. They went to club after club, they drove around, they went for miles, they stayed out for days on end looking there for somebody to take a chance on Griezmann but it simply didn't come. But did he give up? Did he and his father there give up on that dream? No, they didn't. And you know what? They had to leave the country. Griezmann had to go abroad to get that chance. He had to leave France, go to Spain to get a real opportunity there where he was actually going to be judged on that footballing ability alone and not for his physicality. It was a big, big risk to leave the country, to leave home, to leave his family. He left them all behind there at just 14 years old, going there to Spain where he couldn't speak the language, he didn't have any friends, he left his entire home behind and still, he still had no concrete guarantees going forward. Sociedad offered him an opportunity, they offered him a chance to make it work, but at the same time, there was no guarantees at the end of it. There was nothing there saying he was going to make it. He had to go there, give up his life to really have the opportunity to prove prove himself and luckily that talent, the talent of Griezmann Oh, it shone through. But it wasn't easy, even then. With the talent that he had at Real Sociedad, he was given an opportunity, he was given a foundation there to go and make himself into a footballer, but at the same time, it was still hard. It still hurt him to be there, away from his family, as a young boy, missing out there on that childhood, with his family, with his friends around him. They only visited San Sebastian a few times per year. The club actually paid there for his family to come over, but only at Christmas and only during the summer holidays. And Griezmann there admitted that he couldn't even call home when he he was in Sociedad, when he was in the Youth Academy, he was staying there with somebody who helped him to get a trial. Even then, he couldn't call home. And he said that he never, ever spoke to his family because he was too scared that he'd break down in tears, that he would show his mother that he wasn't coping, that he wasn't feeling right now, like he belonged there. He was isolated. But still, deep within Griezmann, there was that dream. There was that driving ambition and that hope to make it as a professional. And even if it hurt at first, even if he was isolated all alone, he was going to make it happen because right from the very beginning, this young boy was always destined for something special in the game of football. And it's very, very interesting and almost heartwarming, really, because that gamble there from Griezmann, that massive risk that he took as a young boy, oh, it's paid off massively, hasn't it? Looking down the line now, looking back on that, he made a fantastic decision there that really has benefited him and his family for many, many years to come. But at the same time, it wasn't an easy step. And it's interesting now that Griezmann actually thinks of Spain as his home. He feels like he belongs there. He feels like, actually, now, that is the country where he truly belongs. And, of course, he's French. He's, of course, he's always going to be a Frenchman. But Spain 
Spain is the country that Griezmann now has fallen in love with. And it all began in San Sebastian with La Real. With Griezmann there spending four years in the youth setup at Real Sociedad before he made his breakthrough at the age of 18, making there his Real Sociedad debut in September and scoring his first ever senior goal just three weeks there after making his original debut. And over the years, fans of La Liga and even those wider afield, they grew to know the name of Antoine Griezmann. In Spanish football, he was always the man that you looked at as an up-and-coming talent. He was always the man there who was destined really at some point to make that big, big move, whether it be in Spain, whether it be to the Premier League. He was a man who was massively, massively talented. And speaking here as a fan of Barcelona, we always had tough trips to the Anoeta. We never really wanted to go and play Real Sociedad. And Griezmann was a big, big part of that. He was always a threat. He was always dangerous. And I particularly remember him being so, so effective in 2014 during yet another loss at the Anoeta. And he scored once. He assisted. He was really, really good in that game. And every time he played them, he was always somebody who was a really, really bright talent. Griezmann there at Sociedad during a five-year spell went on to make 202 appearances for the club, scoring 52 goals and providing there 18 assists in that time. And I think they're very, very impressive numbers for a man who played the majority of his football there on the left side as a winger. And his former coach at Real Sociedad came out with a, a fantastic quote on Antoine Griezmann, Philippe Montagnier. He used a fantastic phrase there. He said, for a coach, Antoine Griezmann is like a Swiss army knife. He can play anywhere and he is effective everywhere. And I think that's absolutely right there. Griezmann, throughout his career, has adapted to different roles, different clubs, different situations, and I think that's going to stand him in very, very good stead, looking at Barcelona and adapting there to a different kind of role and a different kind of setup, because he can make it work. He has the talent to be a success anywhere he goes. And quite clearly, that sort of talent there at Sociedad on show every single weekend, that did not go under the radar. Atletico Madrid in summer of 2014, they came knocking. They came on the scene and they agreed to pay Antoine Griezmann release clause at the time, which was 30 million euros. And I think that everybody was in agreement. Even then, that was a stunning deal. Atletico Madrid there had got a wonderful, wonderful player for just 30 million euros. And before we do go on to talk about Griezmann's achievements at Atletico Madrid, of which there are certainly many of those, we certainly have to talk about the initial period, the initial phase really, after he'd signed there, because I think it's also very important when looking at his time at Barcelona to come, because it's all about the adapting process, because there's no question about it in my mind, Griezmann there had to do some serious serious adapting to truly fit in at Atletico Madrid, because at Sociedad he played in a team there with a completely different philosophy and completely different mindset in a different role, and I think at Atletico he really did well to hone his game to improve himself, to really take on the advice of others, and actually thrive under that I think he loved working with Diego Simeone and under Simeone, he really was there, a key, key part of that team. And Simeone made him the heart of everything there in a much more central role, closer to the goal. And he was in a team, though, that played a completely different way. Griezmann had to come in and he said, look, I had to train harder. I had to really, really work for the team straight away. I had that instilled in me that I had to run. I had to work every single game out there. There was no option but to give your absolute maximum level. And there was one thing, actually, again, looking at Barcelona to come. There's one thing that I really liked, actually, when I heard him talk about his time with Atletico Madrid. He came out really and he said this about their work ethic and in particular about their pressing. He came out and said, I love it at Atletico Madrid when we've got to close down the defenders. I love pressing high. I love putting pressure on the goalkeeper. I want to go out there and do it. I want to go out there and give my team everything. I love that part of it. And I think that's great. The Griezmann wants to go out there and actively wants to work hard. He enjoys it. He thrives on that kind of role. And I think at Barcelona, when we have our forwards who should be there, that first line of defence, I think Griezmann pressing high, putting in that good work, bringing that work ethic that he established under Diego Simeone with him to Barcelona, that will be a really, really big positive. And I think when you're looking at Griezmann's time with Atletico Madrid in general, there are some certain highlights in that time in particular. You can't forget really his contribution in Atletico Madrid reaching the 2016 Champions League final. In that campaign, he scored seven times in 13 games, and those included there some big, big match-winning goals. For starters there, you have to straight away talk about the double that he scored in Atletico Madrid's quarter-final victory over Barcelona. Two big goals there that sent us packing in the Champions League. And then, of course, providing the match-winning away goal that Atletico Madrid needed against Bayern Munich in the semi-final stage. That was a massive goal there that Griezmann got and sent Atletico to the Champions League final. But, of course, when he got there, there was heartbreak in particular. In this European final, Atletico Madrid going on to lose on penalties, and it was a big, big low for Antoine Griezmann. But he swore to himself that he wouldn't let the same thing happen two years later, when once again, Atletico Madrid find themselves in a major European final. 
final. This time, of course, it was the Europa League title on the line and Griezmann didn't leave anything to chance. He didn't leave anything at all out there. Against Marseille, he was sensational. He scored twice there during a Man of the Match display in that game. And that, of course, was after he'd already scored in every knockout round prior to that final. He scored against Copenhagen, he scored against Lutum Motive Moscow, he scored against Sporting Lisbon and also against Arsenal. A big, big goal there. And yet, just days after that, days there, after Griezmann had secured the Europa League title, and Atletico Madrid really, really celebrated that. They were out in the streets, they were out in Madrid. They loved winning that title. A big, big moment for them. Just days after that, during Atletico Madrid's final game of the season against Eibar, Griezmann is booed and whistled by the Atletico Madrid crowd at the Wanda Metropolitano after it emerged that initial talks had taken place between Barcelona and between Antoine Griezmann. And it actually took there Diego Godin, who's a very close friend of Griezmann. We're going to come on to that friendship later. He actually took Godin there to calm them down, calm the crowd down, and basically say to them, look, don't boo our star player. Please don't do that. But look, why do they want to do that? Griezmann there had just landed them a big, big title. He'd been a massive player for them. And yes, talks had taken place. But at the end of the day, that was a bit harsh there from the Atletico crowd. And yet, after that, still he stayed with Atletico. And I think you have to acknowledge here at some point that Griezmann did try and be loyal. He did try and stay at Atletico Madrid and give it everything there to go and win the Champions League. He really, really did want to be a success there and stay and win the big titles and he gave them another chance. He wanted them last season to assemble a squad and have the mentality to take home the biggest prize in club football. But as we saw last season, despite a lead in their first leg against Juventus, a comfortable lead there in that game, a defensive mindset in the second leg leg saw them crash out at the last 16 stage and that there that was the final straw for Antoine Griezmann he gave him a chance he wanted to be loyal but he wants to win he wants to win the Champions League and for that reason he took it upon himself to leave Atletico Madrid and he left there having made 257 appearances in his time scoring 133 goals and providing 50 assists in that time with Atletico and in the Simeone team in a defensive team there those are sensational numbers they really really are nothing short of outstanding but of course course, as Griezmann moves here onto Barcelona, onto a new chapter in his club career, one constant has always remained, the French national side. And like any kid growing up in France, all Griezmann ever wanted to do was represent his country, play for his country, play for that shirt, play for the badge, and ultimately to make his family proud. And certainly, although it started off tricky, Griezmann... Oh, he did that too. But like I say, Griezmann in many ways did get off to quite a difficult start on the national team stage because in November 2012, Griezmann at the time was a French youth player coming through the system, trying to make his name there and make the step up to the French senior side. But actually, Griezmann in November 2012, along with four other youth players, were caught by the media on a late night out. Late night out on the town, they'd been drinking. It wasn't a good look at all. The day there, the night before an international game. And of course, the French media were up in arms about this. It got out. It was on the front page. They were really, really unhappy. It almost turned into a scandal. And of course, it wasn't taken lightly by the French Federation and also the French national team fans. They went on there, the French Federation, to suspend Griezmann and the four other players from the French national team in general for an entire year. So for a whole year there, Griezmann wasn't able to represent his country because of his previous actions. During that time, of course, Griezmann in the media, right around France, his reputation as a young and up-and-coming star that took a real hit that did not go down well at all and his actions were that there of a foolish youth who seriously had lessons to learn but he did learn them he did learn them he took that on board and that's the thing about Griezmann here he can have ups he can have downs but ultimately he usually learns the lessons and very very quickly because during that time there was criticism there was skepticism of Griezmann he had to hit back and in the only way that he knew how much like he said already at Barcelona he's gonna do that on the pitch. And that started there in 2014 at the World Cup where France coincidentally ended up being eliminated by Germany at the quarterfinal stage. But it was actually there the tears of a young Antoine Griezmann that really captured French hearts. They really took to that and they actually saw there a man who wanted to be a success. The fact that he cared. It wasn't about money. It wasn't about fame. It wasn't about the glamour. He really, really cared. All he wanted to do was win there with the French national team. And after they got knocked out, he broke down in tears. And the fans there, they really, really could relate to that. And this right here, you have to remember, is a nation who had to endure the 
failure, the embarrassment also of the 2010 World Cup and having had a string of players there who didn't take pride in wearing the French shirt but Griezmann was not going to be one of those. He wasn't going to be a player who gave up on the fans and the fans there with the French national team up to this point were losing interest, they were losing faith and yet here was a young, talented player, an exciting attacking player who could make them believe, who could make them get off their seats again, somebody there who cared about them and the team and somebody who could really take them to the success that they desperately craved. And at Euro 2016, the French national team, it erupted back onto the scene of international football and it was on a stage where they craved it most. All on home soil, in France, the home tournaments. This was where, for me, the foundations were laid for France's World Cup campaign, as we're going to come on to in a minute. But right here at Euro 2016, they should have, in theory, still walked away with this trophy too because Griezmann scored six goals in seven games and he scored in each of France's knockout games in the lead-up there to the final. He scored twice against Ireland, one against Iceland, and a fantastic double there against the then world champions, Germany, in the semi-final stage. A wonderful, wonderful moment for Griezmann there to put his country into the final. Once again, life was back into the French national team, but again, more loss, more heartbreak for Antoine Griezmann in a major European final. And it must have hurt. It must have really hurt there to lose with France when it mattered most, just weeks, of course, after he'd lost the Champions League final with Atletico Madrid. And to bounce back from that, you'd need some serious, serious mental strength. But Griezmann... Being Griezmann, he learned again. He learned from that loss, he took on that experience, he took that on board, and he used it there as motivation to land something bigger, something even more historic for his national side. And boy, did he achieve that at Russia 2018. It's the World Cup. And this right here is the biggest stage you can get for your country. And for France, led by Griezmann, they were about to deliver. And it would be really, for the fans, a wonderful moment. Griezmann there scored against Australia in their opening group match. He scored vital goals against Argentina and then against Uruguay in the knockout stages before his cross against Belgium in the semi-finals led to the only goal of the game to put his team into the World Cup final. But of course, Griezmann again, being Griezmann. He likes a bit of drama. He likes the big stage. He left the best until the final because unlike the champion league and unlike the Euros this was not going to be a losing occasion for Antoine Griezmann and he actually said afterwards that he had to stop himself from crying during the national anthem before the final began but when the anthem stopped and when the game began Antoine Griezmann produced a man of the match display once again here against Croatia to land the biggest prize of all and write himself into French footballing history as France won the World Cup and Griezmann really did put on a show there in the final and after the game his coach Didier Deschamps came out he said Griezmann has done a lot in the game he's so so talented this man is something very special but for me he's got a lot lot more that he can still do this man can still go on and achieve many things in the game trust me I know him very well. And of course, France went absolutely wild. The fans were doing the L celebration. The players in the dressing were doing the L celebration. The country had been brought at last to its feet, given something there to be proud of. When they needed it most, of course, not just on the footballing side, but also looking at France as a country. Of course, they wanted something to celebrate, to be cheerful about. And during the World Cup trophy parade, so, so many people came out there to applaud the champions, to applaud that team. And Antoine Griezmann was there, and he didn't even take his phone. Somebody who the media would have us believe, all about the fame, all about the glamour, always wanted to be in the headlines. Griezmann didn't even take his phone there on the trophy parade. He just stood. He watched. He looked the celebrations, what it meant to those fans, the emotion. He wanted to take it all in there without any distractions. And Griezmann, at the end of the day, he's a very, very down-to-earth guy. And I think actually, at the end of the day there, that's part really of a wider message in this video about Griezmann. Because I think actually there, there's so much more to him as a person than meets the eye, and particularly what the media might lead you to believe. Right here is a family man who's always been close with his family. He always wants to keep an eye on them. He always wants to be close to them. He really does thrive on that and he lives for the memories he lives for the emotions the feelings not for the money not for the fame not for the glamour he's not arrogant he's not cocky and I think actually that's going to stand him in fantastic fantastic stead when he comes to Barcelona and just to really highlight that about Griezmann about being selfless and about the way that he is as a person I want to talk here about Griezmann and Uruguay because I'm absolutely sure that you've heard about this somewhere along the line basically the connection between Griezmann and the country of Uruguay because he really does have a real affection for Uruguay as a country about their culture and in particular 
he's always had a really great relationship with Uruguayans at all the clubs that he's been at throughout his career. And believe me, he really, really does. This isn't just taught. This isn't just something to make him look good or something to make him stand out. This is a real true story here. Because you remember his goal against Uruguay in the quarterfinal there of the World Cup for his country. That was the second goal of the game to take his country there to a World Cup semi-final. And yet... He didn't even celebrate it. There was no Tate BL, there was no other Fortnite moves, there was nothing from Griezmann. He didn't do anything. And Griezmann said after the game, it was out of respect for Diego Godin, for Uruguay as a country, and it just didn't feel right to him to celebrate in this moment. That's how close he feels to Godin, and that's how close he feels to the country of Uruguay, which has always treated him so well right the way through his career. And again, that all started way back at Real Sociedad. It was a Uruguayan striker, Carlos Breno, who took young Antoine Griezmann under his wing when he started at Real Sociedad and really, really helped him. And funny enough, that was interestingly where Griezmann started to drink mate. The drink, of course, that Messi and Suarez always arrive at games drinking. That's the same stuff there that Antoine Griezmann also likes to enjoy. So they've already got something there, certainly in common. There was also Martin Lasarte, who is his coach, of course, at Real Sociedad. Then, of course, at Atletico Madrid, he's very, very good friends, and I mean very good friends, with Diego Godin, which I think there is quite an unlikely friendship. I think there from the outside Godin wouldn't want to be friends with somebody like Griezmann or they wouldn't really be together that often. But Godin is actually Antoine Griezmann's daughter's godfather. And I think that says it all there. Something very unlikely because you think of Godin there as a leader a model professional at Atletico Madrid at national team level as well. The perfect trainer. And if you believe the media, if you take on board what they're saying, you'd have to think there that a player like that wouldn't really want to be friends with Griezmann. They wouldn't really be that close to Griezmann. And actually they wouldn't really like what they were doing half of the time. But no, Godin, Griezmann, they get along so well. They're really, really good friends. And it just goes to show, on a wider scale, on a wider message here from this video, there's always so much more to a person than what first meets the eye. There's always so much more deep within, deep down, that you may not see in the media because they don't want you to. It doesn't sell papers. To paint Griezmann as a selfless person, as a family man, it's boring. It's bland. It won't sell articles. What will, though, is the Fortnite celebrations. What will, though, is all the rest of the stuff that you hear about Griezmann. But deep within, deep down inside there's two sides to every story and particularly here with Griezmann I think he's a very good guy and deep down all he wants to do in football is be successful and certainly at Barcelona I for one am hoping that's the case because for me with Antoine Griezmann there is so much to be excited about. And so I really hope that you have enjoyed today's video, guys, on Griezmann. I did want to do this because I've learned a lot of things. I've been Googling things. I've been looking on the internet about Griezmann's past and looking into it in a bit more detail just to find out some more about him and what really, really makes him tick. And I think here we can see a person who is desperate to succeed. And we're all with him. We're all with him on that because we want the same too. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below, guys. Let me know if you've got any interesting facts, anything you want to share about Antoine Griezmann in the comments down below. Thank you, as always, for watching, and thank you for your support. I will see you soon, but until next time, as always, Vesca El Barça. Barça!